please welcome Salome Shalak. Thank you very much. When I was 23, I was offered the opportunity to accompany an elderly couple from the States on a six-week tour, first class, all expenses paid, to France. At that stage, I had never been to France or Paris, and I'd certainly never have travelled first class, so there was no way I was missing out on this opportunity. But I had two big problems. The first problem was I had a South African passport which required a Schengen visa to travel to France. The second big problem was my travel companions. <coughs> Mr. Cabot was a large, obnoxious, loud American man with Alzheimer's disease. Mrs. Cabot was a frail, tiny French aristocrat in a wheelchair. So we arrived at St Pancras station and I managed to get them from where we got out of the taxi to the security check where we check our luggage a little bit this way. Come on Mr Cabot. I don't want to go to Paris. Why are we going to Paris? I want to go home. Come on, Mrs. Le Mrs. Mrs. Cabot, and I would push her in her wheelchair. And that's how we went all the way to security. We got to the security, and I helped Mr. Cabot through, and it was all good. And I pushed Mrs. Cabot in her wheelchair, and it was all good. And then I started putting luggage on the conveyor belt. And that's when all hell broke loose. The alarm started going off. There were red and blue lights flashing everywhere, and there was policemen running from every corner towards us. They grabbed a bag we had with us and started unpacking it right there. You had panties going everywhere and medicine and all sorts of things flying in the air. Turns out, Mr. Cabot decided to pack his hunting knife. <laughs> the police took us into a tiny little room and Mr. Cabot immediately started throwing a hissy fit like a three-year-old. Mrs. Cabot started crying and I thought today I have a first-class ticket to jail. An hour later, I managed to convince the police that Mr. Cabot had no ill intent. In fact, he probably didn't even know what he was doing. Mrs. Cabot was all right, and the police decided that if Mr. Cabot is willing to surrender the knife, they're willing to let us go. Yes, I'm going to France. <laughs> so with 10 minutes before the Eurostar departed, I said, come on, Mr. Cabot. Why are we going to France? I don't want to go to France. Come on, Mrs. Cabot. And I pushed them all the way to that glass box where the lady with the stamp that lets you in sits. I had to take a moment to think to myself before I could hand over my passport. But I took Mr. Cabot's passport and I gave it to the lady. Stamp. Bon voyage. And I took Mrs. Cabot's passport, handed it to the lady. Stamp. Bon voyage. And with the most innocent look on my face, I handed over my passport. Where is your visa? I said the only thing I could think of. Visa? <laughs> you need a visa. <sighs> I didn't know I needed a visa. <laughs> what do you mean a visa? 
you need a visa. But, but look at them. Look at me. I didn't know I needed a visa. <laughs> what visa? I don't have a visa. Look at them. They're all there. <laughs> Stamp. Just go and stay out of trouble. Five minutes later, I was sipping champagne in row 34D, first class on the Eurostar. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Cabot. Thank you.